whole bunch of Christians saying Jesus was coming back any moment now. But according to your doctrine in this timeline, he should have been here. And so now there's confusion. That's a surprise, isn't it? It is my sincere desire, and I do not repent, that y'all should shut your mouths now. You're subverting whole houses with your false doctrine. The faith of whole houses. Well, it's a better idea to wear a millstone necklace on a walk on a dock than it is to preach the false gospel. I'm sure of that. Paul said y'all's mouths must be stopped. How is that? The Lord rebuke you and Satan sift you as the wheat that you learn not to blaspheme. Why, yes, indeed. I can expound on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 with an open Bible for hours and hours and hours. It's been right there the whole time. But if you can't be bothered, I'll sum it up for you real quick. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 opens up by discussing what we're going to be talking about. The return of Christ and our gathering together unto him is the whole topic, which some were teaching had already happened. They still are. They're preterists. That's the heir of Hymenaeus. Go on and get sifted now. If you preach Christ has already come. Preterism is false. The mountains and islands are all still here. Do y'all even read the Bible? It's with great joy. I know some of you do. Where my rider dies at? Because we're going to ride till the day we die. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Christ is not coming to get us except there come a falling away first and then the man of sin be revealed. Yeah, no, there's a Messiah in Jerusalem. Now, why don't y'all read Matthew 24? Many will come in my name, Jesus said. The Antichrist is not revealed until the abomination of desolation. And if you want to know what Paul was talking about in 2 Thess 2, you should read Matthew 24 and hear Jesus tell it to you exactly in order, spelled out clearly. Verse 9, that's that tribulation promised to Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2. It is for the church. The tribulation is the war on the saints, and that causes the falling away. You know that by the parable of the seed. In Matthew 13, the seed that falls on stony places when persecution or tribulation comes, they fall away. Oh, uh, it says offended in Matthew. All right, well, read the parable in Luke. It says fallen away. Between just those two parables and those two gospels, you know that offended means falling away, and you know that temptation means persecution and tribulation. What do y'all think I just make all this up? The Bible clarifies itself. I'm just telling y'all what the Bible says. So the parable of the sower, the seed falls on rocky places, no root. That's the tribulation in verse 9. What immediately follows that is the falling away. The love waxes cold. What follows that? The abomination of desolation, the man of sin revealed. It's all written down, y'all. The moon turns to blood. That's the bride getting martyred. I know he won't suffer his bride to be bloody. Do y'all know who Alokiba is? Hate to break it to you, but she's a bigger whore than her older sister is. Have you read the letters to the churches in the Revelation? The tribulation causes the falling away, and the falling away causes Michael the Restrainer to stand up, go fight war in heaven, and throw Satan down. For the abomination of desolation, the man of sin to be revealed. The rapture's at the seventh trumpet. 